I recently posted a video on my channel asking people to ask me anything they want. It doesn't have to be about movies. It could be about personal things like, why is my hair so bad? And they asked, they asked that question. It's because sometimes your haircut doesn't go according to plan. Okay, I'll address it more in the next video. But for this one, I'm focusing on Patreons and YouTube Join members. They get top priority on this video because they know it takes me a lot of time to produce this content on top of having a family and a full-time job. So truly a big fictional hats off to you for joining me over there. I'm gonna be doing a plethora of these videos throughout the month of October in between all the scary thriller related stuff I plan on putting out. I'd say horror related, but it just sounds like I'm saying horror. And so if you ask questions in that last video, there was, there was like a hundred of them or so, uh, I will get to them, not all of them, but I will try to do as many as I can in the next few videos. Doing it in one would just be absurd. That's that, I don't have time for that shit. Let's begin. Mark Markson asked me, do you play a musical instrument? When you mess around singing, you have a great pitch. Thank you very much, Mark. And no, I don't play an instrument. Although back in the day, I'm talking a million years ago when I was in third, fourth grade, I was a mean violinist. I played that horse hair on string like you wouldn't believe. I regret not keeping up with the violin. It was a beautiful instrument. Um, Alas, that is the thing. We have a piano in the house. Olivia is playing, my daughter. I, I'm tempted to like secretly learn the piano since I work from home alone now with the kids off at school and my wife off at work. I could like teach myself piano and then just one day blow them away. I could just walk over to the piano, open it up, throw back the, whatever these things are, the wings of a, a suit coat that I'm wearing, sit down, I paid my dues. Ding, 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 ding. Time after time. Ding, 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 ding. I've took my chances. Bum, 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 bum. And committed no crime. Ding, ding. And bad mistakes. Ding, 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 ding. I've made a few. Ding, ding, ding. I've hit my head a sentence in there. Something like that. I don't know the words, I'm just making them up. But it's a beautiful song. Melvin Day gets right to the point. How tall are you? And if you could change your height, what would it be? Melvin, I'm a sturdy six foot three. And a half. I don't know, I'm pretty happy with my height. Um, it does lead to some issues with my arm length. My arms are insanely long. I, it just... It's, it's crazy. I don't know the measurements, but th these things are just nuts. It's hard to put any sort of mass on them. I, I, it's a struggle I live with as a tall person. It, the struggle is real. I've had a very privileged life. Theo Williams asks, any TV shows that really tickle your pickle, past or present? Theo, I have a lot of TV shows that not only tickle my pickle, but they scratch my patch. Don't even know what that means, but I'm gonna roll with it. I grew up loving Seinfeld and The Simpsons. I'd say season one through nine, season one through 10 are peak Simpsons. Uh, Seinfeld's peak all the way through. You could skip season one. It's, it's, there's only a handful and they're pretty bad, but Seinfeld's just pure, pure goodness. Curb Your Enthusiasm, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Arrested Development, seasons one through three. The rest of them are just garbage. Breaking Bad, Scrubs, uh, Game of Thrones, besides the last season. Walking Dead, besides the last five or six seasons. Like, it, it would be almost insulting to start listing them because I would leave out some really great shows that, that uh, uh, I am very fond of, and I'd feel bad if I left some out. Gilmore Girls, I, I, I like, I'm a G2 fan. My wife loves it. I think most women do, and occasionally a guy slips in there. I'm okay with that, I'm comfortable with it. They have witty dialogue, okay? Goose says, I know you've been hitting the gym, bro. What size are those guns? Well, Goose, as I've stated, the guns, I don't know what they're registered as. Um, here, we'll give you a little flex, a little pop, boom, kaboom. I, I don't know, I can't, I don't have a tape measure. I don't have any way to tell you what the dimensions are. I think they're all right. I could get more on them. The, the problem is the forearm is just, the forearm is just weak. It's just sad. There's not a lot that you can do for those. What do you do, these things? I don't know. G give me some advice in the comments how to how to get the forearms a little meatier on a, on a tall drink of water with gangly arms. Susan M asks, what are your most cringy, guilty pleasure flicks? Be honest. Susan, I'm a little taken aback by your comment. Your statement implies that I'm not typically honest. What the hell is wrong with you? I know you're a patron, but how dare you, ma'am? How dare you? 
I'm joking. Uh, I don't... Here's the thing. I, I want to be honest, but I don't... I'm so deluded by my own tastes that I truly don't think I have a cringy pick in the bunch. I legitimately like all the movies I watch and I'm proud to stand by them. Speed Racer? I'm gonna be putting out another Speed Racer video because the, the last one I did is on my second channel, Adam Olinger, which I don't really support or post to outside of an occasional video every couple months. It's random. I'm trying to figure this channel out still, okay? It's only been a decade since I've been doing this. I'm still trying to figure me out. I recently have jumped on the Spider-Man 3 bandwagon. I think I was always there. I was just a little afraid to admit to myself that I really like Spider-Man 3, even though it's a huge step down from Spider-Man 2. I, I can't think of a lot that I just, I just watch in shame. So I'm sorry, Susan, but that is my honest answer. David Ranney says, sumo or conventional? David. I wasn't sure at first glance if that was a personal question about my lovemaking skills or lack thereof, uh, but then I realized you were referring to deadlifts. The sumo stance is the wide one where you put your legs like spread eagle and, and then lift up, or you do the more conventional, which is the you know sh shoulder length apart. I am a sumo guy, believe it or not. I was turned on by it when I uh, lifted with a guy at work uh, a year and a half ago, and I never looked back. I like the sumo, it just feels more comfortable to me. J no 10, J number 10, I'm not sure what he's going for there. There, there might be some clever wordplay, but I don't see it. Which of your favorite movies is most unlike the others? I really enjoy Gangs of New York, The Count of Monte Cristo, Prisoners, and movies of the like, but Groundhog's Day with Bill Murray is easily a top 10 favorite of mine. Well, Jay, I'm not sure anybody asked what your favorite movies were but I digress. I'm having a little trouble parsing the question out. I don't know if you mean like which one is the most unconventional in my repertoire. Like if I have a certain genre that I enjoy and, and, and most of my films fall into that. And then there's that one little, one little outlier. Uh, I don't, I don't really know. This Q and A is going south real quick. The Shining is not a movie that's in like my top 10, but I do really like that movie and it is completely different than everything else I, I usually go for. So maybe I, I would say that. Count of Monte Cristo, by the way, is freaking awesome. I love that movie, good pick. Gibson Crandall asks, do you enjoy reading? If so, what do you like to read? What are some favorite things you have read? In hindsight, it would have been funny if I said, do you like to read? What are some of the favorite books you have read? That would have been a fun little, little stupid thing to say. Anyway, I do enjoy reading quite a bit. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of time these days to read in between juggling the family, the work, the full-time job, yada, yada, yada. However, I do read to my son most nights for a good 20 to 30 minutes. So we've been going through a bunch of different book series. I read Harry, all the Harry Potters to my daughter, loved it. I do all the voices. It's super, probably super cringe to hear, but the kids like it. I like do, I like the performance, okay? And since I have the movies to work off of, it's really fun doing like a Snape voice, talking really slowly. We did Percy Jackson with Connor. I've done Fable Haven, which is super underrated. That book series is awesome. And now we're on to a lamer set of books. It's, I don't even remember what it's called. Something stories. It kind of is a Fable Haven ripoff. It's, it's about a couple of kids, Connor and Alex, who go inside of a book of fairy tales. So they're in the fairy tale world. So they're dealing with, you know, Cinderella and the evil queen and, and Rapunzel's in there. Like, oh, there's a little bit of twists on all the characters, Red Riding Hood, Jack and the Beanstalk, whatever. The land of stories. I got there. I got there myself. We're on the second book. They're fine. They're fine for kids, but uh, eh. My daughter's reading Aragon. I read all those. I freaking love Aragon. That, that's my shit. When I was able to read, I was reading more movie style books like Jurassic Park, Prey. Books that would end up being adapted into movies anyways. I don't know if Prey ever was, P-R-E-Y. Uh, the, the Michael Crichton book series, basically. Emmanuel Santiago asks, reflecting on your life, what's one of the things that have brought you the most joy? I don't want to sound sappy, but I probably will a little. I do have children ages 9 and 12, and I have to say, since I'm a huge movie buff, being able to experience films again through their eyes is so awesome. It's so fun. I, like, I just watched the Matrix trilogy with my daughter over the summer. You know, we had, we had some Chipotle. We're watching it. We're having a great time together. It was freaking great. Going to the movies with my kids is a magical experience almost every time. Even if the movie sucks, just seeing them eating the popcorn, you know, drinking their slushies and just having fun. Uh, obviously, we've experienced so much together, you know, going on rides, going to Disney World, uh, you know, playing video games. All that stuff is just phenomenal. 
looking back in history, you know, obviously getting married to my wife, sharing all the experiences with her over the years has been tremendous. And then going even further back to when I was a youngling and being raised by my parents who were both great. I, I had the fortunate upbringing of, of being with some pretty awesome parents. I had the unfortunate experience of losing my dad when I was 16. That really, that really fucking sucked. But you look back on these events and you just appreciate the time you had with the person. Thanks, Emmanuel, for the heartache. Let's move on. Carol C. hits me with a book report. I'm gonna probably shorten this up for the video. Do you recall a scene from a movie or trailer that you saw as a child that had a profound effect on you even though you had no idea what was really going on? I'm gonna paraphrase, but she goes on to say hers was The Shining when the elevators open and the blood started flowing. It felt like an eternity. She wouldn't actually go to see the movie until she was in her 20s because she was concerned it was just going to be a lot of blood. Carol then ends by saying, I'm pretty sure your kids would have slept through the debacle. My daughter has seen The Shining. She was like 10 at the time. Connor has not. He won't for many years to come because he gets scared of things. He's a big imagination. Olivia, though, she could watch pretty much anything and not even flinch. Uh, she loves the film. Huge fan of it. Connor will love it when he does eventually see it. I just know him. They have no problem sitting through slow films as long as there's some payoff. And The Shining has payoff. And it has some complexity. It has some intrigue. It's a great movie. I've seen plenty of amazing movie trailers that like stayed with me in that regard, but nothing that you know kept me up at night or anything. Uh, Sin City, I still think is one of the best movie trailers. It was so cool. I watched it like 30 times. The movie wasn't as good as the trailer, but the trailer was awesome. The movie still ended up being really cool. It was just hard to live up to that preview. I will say 300 had a similar effect on me too. When I saw the trailer for that, I was freaking floored. I thought, holy shit, this is so different than anything else I've ever seen before. And that movie, by the way, is in my top 10. There's some movies that come along that just change the game altogether. I had never seen anything like 300 and I barely have seen anything since. Unfortunately, not even by Zack Snyder. Austin Odegaard asked, sorry if I butchered that, what are your thoughts on The Fifth Element? You knew I'm a man of good taste as you are. And of course I love The Fifth Element. It's got Bruce Willis, it's got Chris Tucker, uh, it, it's got multi-pass. I mean, Mila Jonovich. Is that how you say it, Mila Jonovich? The, the, the woman that's basically in all the Resident Evil movies and not much else. She was in the new Hellboy, that was terrible. Anyway, yeah, uh, freaking fifth element, man. I saw that three times in theaters. I remember the reviews trashed the living shit out of the film. That was one of the movies where I watched and then saw reviews and thought, you know what? Movie critics are full of shit. They suck. They're no better than I am at reviewing. I could I could review movies. That was one of the early times in my life. And I was, I was very young then. I was in probably early high school where I thought, yeah, these guys, these guys don't know what they're talking about. The Fifth Element's freaking great. The Republic of Bridger asks, in a world where all media will be deleted and you are the only one that can save three TV shows, choose one comedy, one drama, and one animated show to survive deletion. Choose wisely, my pun happy friend. I don't know why I put on such a weird voice for that, but here we go. Animated show. Ah. Animated show is really tough because Avatar The Last Airbender is my favorite, but there's only three seasons. The Simpsons has a thousand seasons, so I feel like I'm getting more bang for my buck, even though only like 10 of them are good. Rick and Morty's solid, but we're, we're very early in that show's run still. What are they on season five, season four? And there's only like t seven or eight episodes a season, so it's kind of bullshit. Uh, Family Guy's solid. I, I know people roll their eyes, but Family Guy's got some good laughs in there. American Dad's solid. You know what? I think Avatar is just so brilliant. I, I just have to pick it. I don't care if it's three seasons. It's three perfect seasons. With my Aang, with my Tosh, with my Sokka, with my Katara. Come on, you gotta go Aang. Go Aang or go home. Drama's easy, I'm a basic bitch. I go Breaking Bad all day, every day. It's wonderfully written from beginning to end. Perfect conclusion, can't beat it. Comedy's gonna date me, but I go Seinfeld. I think it, it has the most consistently good seasons. Two through nine are pretty fantastic all the way through. Office is great, but you have three solid seasons, a couple decent ones, and then you have some really bad ones. I mean, we're talking four pretty awful seasons in a row. So yeah, I go Seinfeld on this. Curb Your Enthusiasm's great. I feel like Seinfeld's way more quotable uh, and just way more memorable, so. 
where I'm at. Last but not least is Jackson Schroyer. He asks, what about Lindsay and your relationship with your kids has allowed you to explore being yourself online and creating a fun online persona while at the same time being a good husband, dad, and man for your family? I've been with Lindsay since senior year of high school and I liked her far before that. I, I, had, a, I had a big time crush on her in late middle school. Uh, so I was going after her for a while. We dated mostly through college, but once you have a great thing going as a guy, you usually screw it up and, and try to see what else is out there in the world. But I kept coming back to her. We got married in our mid 20s, around 26, 27 years of age, I think. I don't know. We. We don't make a huge deal about anniversaries or anything like that because we've been together for an eternity and I don't feel like we should get a prize for it. We just love each other. Uh, I think because we've been together for so long and started out at such an immature age, you know, in high school, we've seen it all. You know, she, she was with me at my lowest point when, my, when I lost my dad. Uh, I've been with her at her lowest point when she lost someone very close to her. Um, we've been through all the pros and the cons. We've had kids together, which can tear a marriage apart based on just the overwhelming odds stacked against you of trying to work and, and keep everything moving. We don't have any secrets. We, we don't, uh, neither of us drinks. I don't go to bars. Uh, we, we share a lot of common things, but we also are very different people. And I think that's a pro as well. She's incredibly supportive of me arguably too supportive. She was celebrating a little too early when I got the call from the Property Brothers to do a web series for them called Working Title. She celebrated too early when Screen Rant picked me up for that exclusive show. But the greatest thing about Lindsay is she cares so much about other people. So we're constantly picking each other up, motivating each other, pushing each other, and we're just trying to be the best people we can be. Because of the flexibility of my job as a web developer and designer and the fact that I've been with the company I've been with for six years now, which is a long time for me. I bounce around from job to job pretty frequently. I, I usually don't stay at a web firm for too long before you know the next best thing is, is coming out. My grandpa Bill, may he rest in peace, had some of the wisest words ever told to me. He said, Adam, you have the job you're at and the job you're going to. And I, that stuck with me all through my life. So I am always looking for the next great opportunity uh, without burning bridges, of course, and with being respectful, putting in my you know notices and whatnot. But when I find a company like the one I'm at now that's willing to be flexible with my hours and just know that I'm getting the work done, that gives me the freedom to film my YouTube show at night, late, or even during the day when the kids are at school and Lindsay's at work. I just need an hour to hit that hard and then get back to my job. We want our kids to experience as much as life as possible. So even though I'm a huge movie fan, and my kids are too, I don't push any of it on them. I want them to explore and see things and try things like different sports. My family was very big into sports. They pushed me into it. They kind of forced, if I'm honest here. Um, and that's okay, whatever. I had a great upbringing, but I don't force sports on them. If they want to try football, great. If they want to try hockey or soccer or volleyball or whatever, that's fantastic. But if they're not liking it, uh, that's, that's, let's move on. There are not enough hours in the day as it stands for me to get everything accomplished I want to, but I prioritize. And it always means family first, are they happy? Are they safe? Do we have money coming in? We're not gonna be you know, begging for food. And once that's all accomplished, then I say, all right, what can I do on the channel this week? Let me put down my bullet points of, of videos I wanna do. I post them out to you guys on the community tab. If I get to them, great. If I don't, whatever. The show doesn't bring in much money. The channel doesn't bring in much money. Even as it stands with me putting out all this content every week. Uh, but that's okay. This is a passion project that I hope will become more who knows when. I refuse to become a fucking loser and start posting daily garbage videos, smut videos, videos uh, being outraged over the same four issues over and over again because it's easy clicks. It would be easy money, but that's not what this is for. I want to thank the Patreon and YouTube join community for these questions. They were awesome. I want to encourage you if you haven't, check out Patreon one more time. Patreon.com slash Adam Does Movies. There's a $1 tier. I don't have that many supporters. It's, it's like 67. I mean, come on. We can, we can do better than that, right? I'm putting out a lot of content here. Or join me on YouTube via the Join Community tab. Uh, I have plateaued as far as revenue goes every month. For the last three months, I've been $1 off from month to month. So it's not like 
whoa, I grew, you know, 20% this month and whoa, the revenue went up another 20% and no, it's gone up 0% for the last three. I have hit a peak and it's not an impressive one. I have to figure out how to bring in more income and unfortunately that, that probably means just asking for you know donations and further pushing the Patreon and YouTube join angle. Once again, thank you very much for those that are supporters. Thank you for watching, uh, sharing the video, being a subscriber, telling your friends and family, and I will see you very soon for another one of these. In between, you can look forward to plenty of more movie reviews, rants, and whatever else I come up with. Take care. I'm sure this will be a fun one to edit with all my rambling. We'll see how it goes. I'm just standing here to talk a little longer why some of these video things pop up, the related, the recommended, the face of me that you can subscribe to. I doubt YouTube's really pushing this to anyone besides my subscribers as it is. So, I mean, so what are we doing here right now? What, what am I doing? Sheila, let's stop this now. Thanks.